As Sim said, I like Linux. So, I'm not going to be preaching from this. I hope many of you know that I had a stroke or an EVM to be tactical. But anywho, this is the day where I tell you and your friendly neighbor about what happened that day. On that day, it was March 6th or 7th or something. And there was snow on the ground. You know how March is. It was cold and nobody wants to go outside, like me. You get the picture. I was doing some pretty hardcore sledding on a ramp that me and my brother made. Um, it was a normal day. Everything was dandy and everyone had smiles on their faces. Well, mostly everybody. Anyway, I went to bed unaware that there was inter internal bleeding going around inside my head. The AVM, aka antivenous malformation, began rupturing. I was unconscious, mind you. I had no idea what was going on. I got this info from my parents, so I have no recollection whatsoever. I was making some weird noises from my bed, and my parents tried to wake me to see what was the matter and why I'm making these weird and strange, strange, utterly creepy noises from my room. They tried their hardest to wake me, but they couldn't. I don't know what was running through their minds at that time, so they called 911. Um, a little side story, my dad volunteers at the fire station and I know some of the people there, like the fire chief, EMTs, and anyways, I'm the story. So the fire department gets there, the fire chief looks, uh, looks at what's going on and he knows the stakes of what's going to happen if I don't survive. So the ambulance drives me west of this town, which is Traverse City, and the doctors examine what's going on. After a while, they say I have internal bleeding. They also say I need to be transferred down to Helen DeVos in GR, Grand Rapids. Some undisclaimed people sent this airplane down to pick me up for, and for some odd reason people always are uh, asking me, how'd you like the helicopter ride? What are they talking about? Now a couple days later I woke up and this is not my house. Not even close. To my surprise, I was in a hospital. I thought it was a dream to be quite frank with you. Well, it wasn't. But I have been paralyzed on the right side of my body. For that reason, I cannot move my right side of my body. I could not walk, could not talk. I was stuck and I felt terrified. But once I got to Helen DeVos, they moved me to Mary Freebed after a few days. I think it was like room 399 or something. I still remember that, it's kind of weird. Um, man, I first thought therapy was going to be awesome. How many of you had therapy? Hands. It's not fun. It sucks. After two or three months of grueling therapy, I was back home with my parents, grandparents who lived down in Oklahoma, taking care of my brother, who sadly cannot make it today. He'd be shredding guitar if he was. And my dog, cat, and all that cool stuff. I heard, I heard that I had to have surgery. Word dawned on me. Surgery. It scared the heebie-bejeebies out of me. As the days got nearer and closer, the more scared I got. Then the day comes. I had to wake up early, head down to Helen DeVos about five-ish. Before I went down under, I had all my family, both uncles, both aunts, cousins, whatever, standing around me, putting their time aside for me. Now, I've been going to church ever since my parents were, and the whole God thing was really pressuring me. Sure, I believe God since I was baptized, but now was the moment of truth. Hoping for the best, I prayed to God to wish me good luck and call him the surgeon's hand. After 15 hours of surgery, 15 hours, I awoke in the same uncomfortable bed, stuck in the same hospital, only in the intensive care portion of the building. I only stayed there for one day, so I guess that's good, right? I guess praying to God really paid off. The surgeons got the AVM out, so yeah, it was good. I just had to repeat the process of going to Mary Freebed for two weeks. And I had two years of outpatient therapy, which I had to thank God for because he gave me the perseverance and the strength to go there. Well, there's mom nagging too, so that's always good, right? That's what moms do. Since I prayed, never, I never stopped doubting God for what he's been able to do. But how and why and when do I start believing in Jesus? Good question. Let's read it together. Uh, 
Uh, you may follow along in your Bible under your chairs or the Bible app, iOS devices, Android, and surprisingly, Amazon App Store. Um, anyway, Matthew 16, 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and so others, Jeremiah and one of the prophets. Well, what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth, excuse me, will be lost in heaven. So from that reading, we see that Simon Peter confesses to that Jesus is the Son of Man. I thought, great, cool, awesome. Jesus is the Son of Man, but why? Why? The why was irk me to end, so I had to find out. So, one lovely day, I was slipping through the book of Acts, I don't read these verses. Acts 3, 4 through 8. Uh, where is it? Right here. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk, taking him by the right hand and helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them to, into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. God gave Peter and John special powers. When they healed in Jesus' name, he proved that Jesus was the Son of Christ. Hey, found it. Found my answer. So I grabbed a pencil, or a pen, or a tablet, doesn't matter. So I could share this with you guys. So this is how my stroke and my findings are applicable to your life. How to believe? Take Jesus Christ as your Savior. Start praying. Treat him as your friend. Why to believe? Jesus is the Son of God, as the previous reading showed you. Acts 3, 4 through 8. When to believe? Anytime, anywhere is a great time. Doesn't matter where you are, what time it is. Great time. That's my story of my stroke. And I don't know, I, I wouldn't be here without God's giving us strength and, you know, it's, it's great to still be here. Thank you.